，我们欢迎林书豪，好不好？林书豪。I am the Lord Jordan. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share a little bit of my life story.、Uh, I've never gotten a chance to do that with my fans in Taiwan, so that's what I want to do right now. So,、uh, when I was a little kid, I grew up in Palo Alto, California, and I grew up、uh, at my home church. I was a very stubborn little kid. If I didn't get what I wanted, I would go to the nearest wall and I would take my head and I would bang it against the wall until I got what I wanted. I ended up getting baptized in the ninth grade and attending Harvard University.、Uh, after I graduated from Harvard, like many of you guys know, I signed with the Golden State Warriors.、Uh, my life changed overnight. I had a lot of media, I had a lot of fans,、um, I had a lot of attention, and most importantly, I had a lot of Facebook friend requests. Right, and I quickly came over to Taiwan, and I played in Yao Ming's charity game. At that time, I thought, "This is this. I can handle this. This is really exciting. This is what I want my life to be like." But that quickly changed as the season came around. Within the preseason, I wasn't playing at all.、Um, on opening night of the NBA season, I was wearing a suit and a tie. I only got on the floor with the Golden State Warriors when we were up or down by 20 points. Quickly, I got sent down to the D League. When I got to the D League, I remember、um, in my second game we had to take a nine-hour bus ride. I remember I couldn't sleep at all. I was thinking about my fear of having bad games. I was afraid to let everybody down. I was afraid to play bad because I didn't want my fans to stop liking me.、Uh, I actually keep a diary, which is kind of girly. On December 29th,、um, I said that I hate being in the D League. I feel embarrassed and I feel like a failure. On January 21st, I said I, I wrote in my diary that I wish I had never signed with the Warriors. At that time, none of the money, none of the fame, none of the, the fans playing basketball for a living, none of that stuff mattered to me anymore. The bottom line was that I wasn't happy where I was. I remember basketball consumed all my time. It consumed all my thoughts. It consumed my energy. Even though I didn't realize it, I was living for myself and I was playing for myself. The bottom line is that I got my priorities mixed up. I wanted to play for my fans. I wanted to play for my career. I wanted to play for my fame,、um, but I forgot to play for God. I like to sit here and tell you guys how great I am and how I did everything right to make it to the NBA, but I know that's very far from the truth.、Um, right now, I'm going to read you guys a list of things that had to happen for me to make it to the NBA. None of them were under my control. First, I was born into a family that loved basketball. I grew to six foot four, 210 pounds. My parents are both five foot six, 130 pounds. I grew up with two brothers who loved basketball. In my junior year in high school, I broke my ankle, and that changed my whole perspective on life because I realized I had to work hard. Coming out of high school, I got recruited by Harvard and Brown, and God closed every other door to me. I had zero scholarship offers. I ended up going to Harvard, where they hired Coach Amaker, and he built the entire team around me. I didn't get drafted, but on draft night, Donnie Nelson from the Dallas Mavericks called me and invited me to play for his summer league team. He was the only one out of every all 30 NBA teams that offered me a spot. Again, these are things that had happened to me that I couldn't control. I was injured, but the day that summer league started, I was healthy. In summer league, we played five games. One of them happened to be against the Washington Wizards. The Washington Wizards happened to have the number one pick of the NBA draft. During that game, Roddy Bubois, the starting point guard, got hurt, and I was able to play my best basketball during that fourth quarter. If any of these things didn't happen, I wouldn't be in the NBA. Despite all these things happening, during the season, I found a way to lose sight of God. So my pastor told me that I should try to spend one hour a day with God. During that time, I came across this verse in Matthew 14. Jesus, Jesus sends his disciples to. The, To the lake, they they get on a boat and go across the lake. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Jesus immediately said to them, "Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid." Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, "Tell me to come to you on the water." Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, "Lord, save me!" Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. "You of little faith," he said. "Why did you doubt?" Like Peter, I took my eyes off Jesus, so I lost my footing and I began to drown. In this passage, it talks about walking on water. 
Walking on water doesn't mean everyone's going to get their dream life or life will be very easy. Walking on water means God will continue to work miracles in your lives. He's going to do things that we can't do on our own. For me, it was making it to the NBA. For me, it was also the peace that I had during my struggles in my first year in the NBA. For you, it could be overcoming an addiction, it could be having a loved one come to Christ, or it could be making it into a college that you really want to go to. The main thing is that we're focused on Him, and when we're focused on Him like Peter was, we can walk on water. I have a lot of what society tells us will bring happiness. And I agree, it does bring happiness, but it doesn't bring me joy. Happiness is temporary, joy is forever. I remember when we, I first got to the NBA, we take a private plane to every single game. They have lots of food, burgers, candy, steak, everything. When I first got on that plane, I ate everything there was. But by the end of the season, I remember I got on one plane and they didn't have a power outlet right next to my chair. Me and my teammates started to complain. That's when I realized how fast happiness can go. I had gone from a boy who just loved the private planes to by the end of the season, I was simply unhappy because there was no power outlet next to my chair. Don't get me wrong, I love playing basketball, I love being in the NBA, and I, and I love my life. But I'm here to tell you, it will not fulfill me every single day eternally. When I was in the D-League, I didn't care how much money, how much fame, how much media attention I had. All I really wanted was to be happy. My joy at that time came from knowing that God sent his son to this earth to die for our sins. He died so he could forgive us of our sins and he resurrected on the third day. Now as I have a relationship with him, I can have eternal peace and eternal joy. That's when I started to have fun on the basketball court again. I stopped putting extra pressure on myself and, and taking so seriously the expectations of myself and everybody else. I had to get out of the boat I had to focus my eyes on Jesus, and I had to take that next step of faith onto the water. That was my miracle, and that was walking on water. So what does that mean for you? I would just say to take that next step of faith, to, to get out of the boat and to start walking. If you don't know who God is, I would just ask you not to c convert and become a Christian. All I would ask or encourage you to do is just to make one little step to get to know who God is. I want everyone to think about what they're living for, what their purpose in life is. It might be your grades, it might be money, it might be cars, it might be video games, it might be beauty or attention. For me, during my first season in, in the NBA, it was basketball. So what I want you to challenge you guys to do is if you don't know God, just simply attend church, talk to a Christian friend, or open your Bible. He offers you salvation, and he offers you something eternal that this world cannot give. If you already know God, how can you take that next step of faith? It could be simply to spend 10 minutes with God every single day. It could be evangelizing to a non-believing friend. It could be giving your best effort in school, in your job, and leaving the results up to God. And it could just be putting others above yourself. I'm not sure what that next step of faith is for everybody else, but I just encourage you guys to think about it, and hopefully you guys can continue to pursue God and possibly take that next step of faith and focus your eyes on God. Thank you for your time. I am the Lord, your God. I go before you now. I stand Dear God, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for coming short. I just want to thank you for giving me a second chance. I want to ask you to forgive me of my sins, that I may know you more, that I may have an intimate relationship with you, that I may receive salvation, that I may have re eternal life. I pray that you would come into my heart, you would live inside of me, and you would use me to glorify you to other people. I pray that I would feel your love, that I would know that you are here with me every step of the way, and that I would have that hope in you that I would have that hope in eternal life. So after I pass through this earth, I can look forward to seeing you face to face in heaven. Thank you again. In your name I pray, amen.